You might not be panicking, but I'm panicking on these players for fantasy football heading into week five and starting it off with player number one. It's going to be Kyle Pitts for the Atlanta Falcons. And right now in the tight end landscape, it absolutely sucks. Like we've been talking about it. This clearly was not the year to go early round tight end. I did it in a lot of my leagues and I'm regretting it. But when we're looking at Kyle Pitts in particular, this guy was drafted a few years ago as a unicorn, a 6'6", 245 pound monster, had wide receivers receiver like catching ability, but he was a tight end. Now he had an amazing rookie season. Now we come here into year four and the biggest argument against Kyle Pitts has been he hasn't had a quarterback. Well, all of a sudden he gets Kirk Cousins and this last week in week four, he had a 68% snap share and had zero total fantasy points, which isn't good. Raheem Morris in the interview after the game was asked, hey, well, what was happening with Kyle Pitts? He only had three targets. Why isn't he getting more involved? And Raheem Morris said, I'm not a stats guy. As long as we're winning, that's what I like to do. And I understand you do want to win. You want to be a team sport but 11 phase points in week one where he caught a touchdown but it's been five seven and zero since then so it's essentially touchdown or bust for Kyle Pitts which is essentially how it is for all tight ends right now Kyle Pitts is getting pushed down my rest of season rankings you got to be panicking you can't be happy because especially if you drafted him in the sixth round you are definitely missing out on some value and so when you're starting to say hey Caleb well, what can I sell Kyle Pitts for we're starting to see some interesting trades start to develop out on the market Kyle Pitts for Zach Ertz straight up I don't know if I'm selling Kyle Pitts for Zach Ertz straight up but that tells you how far the mighty have fallen. Kyle Pitts for Terry McLaurin. I mean, Terry McLaurin, scary Terry. Uh, maybe someone's not super high on this Jane Daniels, Terry McLaurin connection, but goodness gracious, uh, go get some Terry McLaurin for Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts for Drake London straight up. Oh my goodness. Uh, that has to be illegal. Give me some Drake London. Even like Kyle Pitts for Isaiah Likely. That's an interesting one. Isaiah Likely has been on the struggle bus, but I think you could convince me if I wanted Isaiah Likely for that. Of course, the Kyle Pitts for Justin Jefferson. That's crazy. Someone's just probably throwing out their league there. Kyle Pitts for TJ Hawkinson. Kyle Pitts for Cole Komet. Kyle Pitts for Kenneth Walker. Like there are some really crappy trades. So I'm not saying that you're going to be able to get all of these guys done in your league, but Kyle Pitts needs to be a guy that we're starting to look at that we're panicking on and saying going forward, man, what are we going to do? Can I get out? Can I sell high? And I say sell high. Like, can we just even sell him to get some better production onto our fantasy football teams? Now, the next player we're going to be talking about is going to be the man right here, Garrett Wilson for the New York Jets. And the part that I have with Garrett Wilson is I had him as a top 10 wide receiver rest of season. So I was super excited. You know, I made those rankings on Thursday night and I was like, if we're looking at the metrics, 11, six, nine targets, it's going to be fine. Goes into this Broncos game and puts up seven fantasy points, had a 96% snap share, eight targets, five receptions for 41 yards. Now, as a whole, Brees Hall, the whole Jets offense was down. It was a bad weather game, very low scoring. We're looking at Garrett Wilson, who's overall wide receiver 36 right now, overall player 93. So he's not even getting returning the value that you drafted on him as a top 15 player in your fantasy football leagues. So hear me out when I say this about Garrett Wilson. I'm panicking. And the reason I'm panicking is because I have given Garrett Wilson so much benefit of the doubt, so much benefit of the doubt. And while you're here, someone commented on my video last week saying, hey, Caleb, you're always panicking. I want to be in a league with you. Well, listen, I've been so hype on Garrett Wilson. And now to see this all of a sudden rip my heart out, it's hard for me to continue to evaluate. So like, what could you trade for Garrett Wilson to kind of make MNs meet, make things feel better for me? It's hard. Garrett Wilson for Devin Singletary. Like, I think you're like, you want the up side of a Garrett Wilson there. Patrick Mahomes and Garrett Wilson for AJ Brown. Garrett Wilson for Aaron Jones, Juwan Jennings. Garrett Wilson for David Montgomery. Garrett Wilson for Dalton Kincaid, DJ Moore. Garrett Wilson, Jordan Mason for Saquon Barkley and Debo. Like, I do think you have to start exploring what these trades are going to look like for Garrett Wilson because I don't know if he's eventually going to become the alpha. We haven't, this is year three. We haven't seen a huge breakout from him. We've been blaming the quarterback production. We're seeing Malik Neighbors absolutely emerge with Daniel Jones as a quarterback. So if Garrett Wilson is going to get it done, he's going to have to start getting it done over the next two weeks. I'm just a little bit worried. And of course, I am starting to panic on some Garrett Wilson. The next guy we're going to be talking about that I'm panicking on is going to be Rashad White for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And you know, 10 fantasy points this last week in a 58% snap share in St. Caleb. It wasn't bad. He was coming in without an injury. The issue for me with Rashad White is the fact that we do have Bucky Irving in this offense. And with having Bucky Irving, Bucky Irving just plain and simple looks like the better running back. He has better metrics. He has better yards per carry. Really, the, the PPR points are kind of what's still holding Rashad White up in his overall value, where he did have three targets for two receptions, 35 yards. 
yards, but still 4.9 yards per carry on 10 attempts. It's not the worst that we've seen from Rashad White, but it's also not the best. So when we're starting to look at what trades you could do to get off Rashad White, like Brandon Ayuk and Rashad White for Christian McCaffrey, I guess you're living on a prayer, hoping that Christian McCaffrey comes back. If you're attaching two guys that are ultimately level struggling right there with Brandon Ayuk and Rashad White, we got Juwan Jennings and Rashad White for Devontae Smith and Zach Charbonnet. I think you could convince me on that Devontae Smith, Zach Charbonnet side. Rashad White straight up for Amari Cooper. Rashad White and George Pickens for Isaiah Pacheco, Tank Dell. Zach Moss, Rashad White for DJ Moore and Nick Chubb. Like there are some options to start to try to get out from Rashad White because I think as we continue on into the season more and more, the thing that we're going to notice about Rashad White is that Bucky Irvin just going to continue to eat and Bucky Irving is the running back that you want to own in this Tampa Bay Buccaneers backfield. The next player that we're going to be talking about, and this is this is sad, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes. And Patrick Mahomes is a top 14 QB at this point, a top 13. You drafted him in the top three, but this last week of 14 fantasy points, he literally has not eclipsed 17 fantasy points this season. When we're looking at guys like a Jaden Josh Allen absolutely breaking fantasy football, I know Josh Allen didn't break fantasy football in week four, but what is going for Patrick Mahomes is that we thought coming into the season that he had Xavier Worthy, Rasheed Rice, and Hollywood Brown with Travis Kelsey. Now we're at the point where we're looking and it's Travis Kelsey and it's Xavier Worthy. With that Rasheed Rice injury, most likely will not be back rest of season. Like I said, I'm recording this on Monday morning. Haven't gotten further results on exactly happened to that knee, but it didn't look good. And so now we're like, okay, we saw Patrick Mahomes be okay last year, but he wasn't like a game winning level quarterback last year. It was still very lackluster. Granted, he still is like a huge, he helps his team win, but he wasn't putting up crazy fantasy football points. So for me, with Patrick Mahomes going for it, and if we're going to trade him, what that's going to look like specifically because if we can't, we just cannot continue to wait on Patrick Mahomes to save our team. Like Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Waddle for Josh Allen. That's a huge dub. Patrick Mahomes for Jalen Hurts. That's a huge dub. Patrick Mahomes for Baker Mayfield. I think that's probably, it leans the Patrick Mahomes side, but I understand being super frustrated with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes and Garrett Wilson for AJ Brown. We talked about that in the Garrett Wilson trade. I do like that AJ Brown side, even getting out on a guy like Patrick Mahomes for Joe Burrow. I understand Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's been performing for fantasy football. Patrick Mahomes hasn't. I know we never want to bet against an Andy Reid level offense, but for me, I do think we have to start to evaluate Patrick Mahomes going forward and really just, I want to be a realist here. I want to help you win your fantasy football championship. I just think that it continues to get stacked up for Patrick Mahomes. I think the Chiefs will still make the playoffs. I think the Chiefs still have a chance at winning, but how are they going to win with Patrick Mahomes going forward? That's the real question. And how is Patrick Mahomes, his stat line going to help your fantasy football team? Now, moving on to my last and final player that I'm panicking on right now, we could talk through a lot more guys, but the main one I want to hit on is going to be Anthony Richardson for the Colts. And when we're looking at trades for Anthony Richardson, Anthony Richardson for Jordan Love, give me the Jordan Love side. Like we said, Anthony Richardson played four games last season and it's already four games in and my dude's already dinged up. We got J.K. Dobbins. Anthony Richardson for Jerry Judy and Jordan Love. I think the side leans for that J.K. Dobbins, Anthony Richardson side, but I understand if you're trying to get out of Anthony Richardson there and wanting to get into a Jordan Love. Uh, we got Brandon Ayuk and Anthony Richardson for Amari Cooper and Kyler Murray. Oh, good me, goodness. I, I think Brandon Ayuk, a lot of that is like name value at that point through the first four weeks. Give me that Amari Cooper, Kyler Murray side. Anthony Richardson for Brock Purdy. That's that's an interesting one. Then this one, Anthony Richardson, Keon Coleman for Justin Fields, Chase Brown. I mean, Justin Fields, Chase Brown. That's, that's the side I'm leaning with. So Anthony Richardson, we do know all ultimate level Konami code points per game upside. We saw that in week one, but we haven't seen it since. And we saw the injury start to happen. So a little bit worried about Anthony Richardson panicking on him going into the rest of the season. And my final panic that I just wanted to highlight, we're not going to talk through any trades. It's going to be Mark Andrews. I do think Mark Andrews is hundred percent droppable after what we've been seeing. It's crazy that you had to drop. You're going to be dropping someone that you drafted in the fourth or fifth round in your fantasy football drafts. We cannot continue to wait for Mark Andrews to emerge because no other, I mean, Isaiah likely had that big week one, but Isaiah likely hasn't bounced back. This team for the Ravens, their offensive line is so bad. The run concepts are great, but we're seeing Justice Hill have nine targets. I mean, all these pass catchers are really struggling in this offense. So for me, I just want to get out. I want to try to get a tight end. Can I get like a Cole Komet replacement? Could I get a Zach Ertz replacement in there and then let Mark Andrews sit there on the waiver wire? And sometimes you just need to coach your players up a little bit like that. You know, when you're a fantasy football manager, you sometimes just need to threaten the center of the waiver wire and they'll perform. We've been threatening that with the last two weeks for Mark Andrews. Hasn't changed. So definitely panicking on Mark Andrews would say that you need to drop him if you do have him. But like I said, appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm putting out more videos this week. We'll be doing a live stream on Wednesday night. So I want you here in the community and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.